tough times, the reality of life makes it harder except what the future's holding for all of us. Higher force calling us, unexpected visits to the core of a tragedy pain has befallen us. And as we get in older, you quickly realize that you have to be stronger than you ever been. Lifespan has to be longer. Too many people taking life for granted. Too much negativity. What's really good, ladies and gentlemen? It's the Talk of New York, Chef. You know how I get down. You know how it is. We're coming at you with something completely different. Now, this one's going to be super special to me. Um, I'm a big impact guy. The guy we're about to interview, uh, me and the boss, Drake Adams, were there when he debuted. So we're super fired up for this. I'm going to introduce, obviously, Drake Adams, and then we're going to interview the man of the hour with the power. Boss, Drake Adams, what's going on today besides this crazy, nasty weather? Nothing much, man. Getting ready to learn some about this man that we've seen debut. Perfect, perfect. So now I'm super hyped up because not only is this guy, now you know me, I'm, I'm all for heels, I'm all for factions, you know what I mean? So not only is he part of the Desi Hit Squad, not only were we there to watch this man's first show when he came out and it was super dope and I know his work. So uh, without hyping it up too, too, too much, uh, Mr. Rohit Raju, how are you, my brother? My God, all of these Nimrods listening right now, expecting a star. Let me tell them something. I am the star, the sun, because everything revolves around the sun. And sooner or later, all these idiots out there are going to realize that. Now I'm doing pretty good. How are you guys doing? <laughs> I'm great. I was like, whoa, he's about to cut a magic promo right now. <laughs> I always try to do something different, you know what I mean? No, that's a great that's... way to start the show off. I'm I mean, who, oh, hey, guys, I'm doing great. It's so great to be here, and, you know, I'm going to be super generic. <laughs> Nah, man. This is fucking pro. Oh, can I say fuck? Oh, my bad. If I, I, can I, can oh, I you, you, okay. Listen, this is pro wrestling, man. <laughs> this is larger than life. This is what we're all about. This is what we should be about. We should be bringing down the heavens on these podcasts and on all these interviews. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's right. Yeah, too sweet to be sour. Yeah. Uh -huh. All right. So, uh, the most annoying question. That anyone can ever ask. I'm gonna have, I'm gonna have Drake Adams ask that question because I really tried to avoid it. But uh, Drake Adams, go ahead, brother. Ask the question that nobody wants to hear, and the same answer for every single interview you've heard from anyone that's ever done one of these. Well, I'm gonna rephrase it a little bit just to change it up. Uh, everybody asks, you know, why do you want to become a pro wrestler and all that stuff. Uh, I'm gonna ask. Was there a specific wrestling match or a feud that made you want to become a pro wrestler? No, uh, there wasn't a specific one. I've always wanted to be a professional wrestler ever since I was a kid. I was always enamored with it. I was blown away by it. And I never thought I could do it because back in the day, it was always you had to be, you know, almost 300 pounds, over six feet. And then I saw the 90s cruiserweights like Benoit, Malenko, Guerrero, Mysterio, Psychosis, Hoovy. And, I, and to me, those were always the best matches on the card. It was something different. And then ECW, you know, you know, Tajiri, super crazy guys like that. And that's when I said, man, I can be a professional wrestler. And uh, I'd always walk around my house cutting promos and stuff like that just on, you know, to be an idiot. And I said, I think I can really do this. And then I, I would record every Chris Benoit match and study it and – I never had the chance to go train because I could. I was poor, you know. I was straight out of high school trying to earn some money, and it was very expensive. And then when I had a had the chance to go train, I was working a full time job, and I couldn't at the time because it was Monday through Friday. And by the time I got there, I wouldn't even. It was like two hours away, so I wouldn't make it. And then I finally caught a place where I could go like a couple times a week for six months, and um, that was that. But yeah, it was the '90s cruiserweights that made me realize I can be a professional wrestler. That's awesome. Now that that question is out of the way, but I do like the way you rephrase that because it was a little different than what it usually is. So I appreciate that. Now, the one thing I like to ask people, and it's what I we're, we're stuck in a crazy time. What are you doing for fun during this crazy quarantine time? Like, what is what is the 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 ace in the hole to go to? I work out every day. I, I um, when I 
first got signed to Impact, I was working at a job where I was working 45 hours a week. They knew of my wrestling. I would use all my vacation time for wrestling. And when I told them I got signed, next thing I know, they were looking for ways to fire me. And I, I think they realized that. And I, I was going to step down. I just wanted to stay a while because I had a bonus coming to me. And But that was a few months away. And next thing I know, I was getting fired. But with my first check from Impact, I bought a half rack, like a half squat rack, and already had a, a bar because I used to have a, a regular bench. But this allowed me to do deadlifts, uh, pull-ups, uh, squats, bench, and a lot of shit on there. And so I bought that. So I And I've been accumulating weights and benches and different bars over time. So I've just been doing that every single day. When it's nice out, of course, we got Midwest weather. So on one day I'm cutting my grass, the next day it's snowing. And uh, I, I like to take my dogs for a walk, grill outside, day drink a lot. Well, not a lot as much as I used to, because I would always go to bars and just hang out and party. But uh, that's not happening. Uh, I'm, I'm playing a lot of Call of Duty. I'm actually not that good, but last night I had a pretty damn good run with the crew. So that was sweet. I'm getting better at that. Playing Final Fantasy VII, the remake on PS4. I was playing my Switch. But I put that down for a little bit because Final Fantasy VII and Call of Duty are my go-tos at the moment. Watching a lot of old wrestling and um, catching up on my shows, a lot of anime, stuff like that. So, I mean, I just try to be busy and creative. I love doing these. Anybody, Anytime somebody reaches out and says, hey, I want to do a podcast, I'm like, let's do it. I have nothing but time. I love talking to people and shooting shit and meeting new people and making connections. And uh, so I, I do a lot of these as much as I can. So... Just, I just honestly trying to stay busy, and uh, I do miss wrestling so much. But I want to be in great shape by the time I come back. I see a lot of people that are, you know, they don't either have a gym or they're not really taking advantage of this time. So uh, I'm trying my best to do that. Awesome, dope. I'm glad you had a good night last night on COD because I did not. <laughs> I actually did. Usually I don't, but last night, man, I was, I was kicking ass last night. Uh, you probably whooped up on me a couple little bit because I was just straight trash. If you were playing Warzone, possibly. Oh, no, I, I'm playing uh, TDM. Okay, okay. <laughs> All right, to my question, though. Uh, I, now, I know, obviously, you came up through the independent scene, and now you're in some of the bigger companies. You've worked in Ring of Honor a little bit. You're obviously with Impact now. Um, is there... Do you prefer working the independent scene more, or do you prefer working for these larger companies? Uh, how do you how do you side there? They have their pluses and minuses. I love working at Impact. I've I, I like talk to D'Lo Brown all the time. You know what I mean? It's like holy shit, I'm talking to D'Lo Brown. When you look at it at that aspect, I, I see Sabu at places and. He knows me, you know. Actually, that was from working with him on the indies when I first started. But I just get to see guys I grew up with. And being on TV, I mean, that's such a cool thing, like, when I think about it. Now, it, it, for me, I'm always hungry. So where I'm at is never good enough. Like, you know, I'm a low man on the totem pole at Impact. And things are kind of going to be changing for me a little bit. Small, but a little bit better than where I'm at. Because they're, you know, I've been busting my ass and they've been seeing some stuff. But uh, so they're going to give me some opportunities to do stuff and hopefully capitalize on that. But uh, I'm never, I never go into a job and want to be satisfied with the entry level position. So uh, where I love being at an impact, I love seeing all the people that I grew up watching on TV and being friends with them. I love seeing people that I work my way through the indies, I, you know, finding success on TV. That's really cool. But I also love the indies where I'm just kind of free. I'm free to do whatever I want. No one's going to really tell me anything. And of, por of course, I've been in it long enough to where a promoter isn't going to really tell me, you got to do this, you got to do that. They'll run you know, the ideas past me. Or they'll say, hey, can we do this? I'd like to do that. Or can we make this work this way? Or what are your ideas on this? So you have that freedom on the indies. And that's kind of before we went on air, what we were talking about Rohit Raju and Hakeem Zayn. What's the difference? Hakeem Zayn is like me turned up to 15, 20. You know what I mean? Um, that's how I started. And the AAW stuff that we talked about, it was my anger, my bitterness, my frustration. Uh, and I put it into that. And we found a way to, Trent and Rob for AAW, we found a way to 
bring it out and create this character where and get people's attention. I remember when I put that mask on, it was cutting these promos. Everyone's like, oh my God, these promos are fantastic. Oh, blah, 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 blah. It's, it has to be Austin Aries or it has to be Killer Cross or it has to be so and so. And it was me. And I knew when the reveal happened and it was me, people would be disappointed because it wasn't what they wanted. They wanted some indie darling, and that's not what I am. But then I cut the promo afterwards with such hatred and passion that people were like, okay, I want to see where this is going now. Because that's all I needed was a break. I can cut a better promo than a lot of guys, most guys out there. I think that's a lost art right now. Guys can't cut promos. And I just needed that opportunity. So on the indies, I get that that freedom to be me. And then I get that challenge to find out who Rohit Raju is when I'm on Impact. And plus time. Man, I'm always worried about going over my time on TV when I'm doing the tapings and stuff. So I'm almost hesitant a lot. I'm, you haven't seen the best of me, which is crazy on Impact yet. You watch the indies, there's no care in the world. I'm just out there and I'm in the moment. On TV, I'm constantly thinking about things. And it's, it's not me at 100% and I can't imagine me at 100% when I finally reach that on impact it's going to be a whole different ball game yo Drake Adams like how do you get a better answer than that facts man he gave me all I was asking for and more <laughs> <laughs> like um now when you said Trent you're talking about Trent Zuberry right that is my dog right there that's my homie right there like that's Probably. my people's and um, I love his wife, Nicole, or, or yes. his lady. Let me say his lady, N- Nurse Nicole, who, God bless her, she, she's on the front lines doing best. what she does. Yes, the absolute best. But, but um, yeah, nah, those are my people. So when you said Trent, I was like, oh, he's got to be talking about my boy. Like, oh, but, dude, hands uh, down. Hands down. Uh, yeah, he, he's – what I try to tell people, and I'm not trying to make it a podcast about Trent because that's my guy. You know, and he Listen, he he's one of the – one of the nicest, most genuine, honest people I've ever met. Like, he he's a good dude. Um, now, see, I'm here. It, it's hard for me when I because I don't try to be super street because I'm kind of street. But uh, I love factions. I love heels, and um, I love what the Desi Hit Squad looks like. I'm not even going to lie to you. Like, I like the whole the whole base of it. I, I dig it. But now my thing, thing is, I, I feel that. Um, it's missing that super aggressive. Like, is there a chance that we see the Desi Hit Squad become more of like a Hit Squad, like really just taking people out? Because with the name Hit Squad, I was like, oh, they're just going to be, you know, thugging cats left and right. And I felt like you guys came off hot and then it, it had a weird middle. But I, I always felt like there's so much talent there that I just wanted to be a little more aggressive or. Like, am I wrong or is it placed right? Because I'm just curious. Like, I, when you see the name Hit Squad, I always thought, like, taking people out. Like, that's – and that's my question. Are we going to see it more aggressive in impact? You are absolutely 100% correct. When it first started, the JC Hit Squad, it was it was myself and Grisinder, and we were doing the uh, – was it Twitch at the time? We were doing we, – we were doing, the, like, the small little pay-per-views. And we were cutting the promos, and the promos we were cutting were very serious promos. And then this was before they brought Gamma. Gamma was already brought on, but they weren't bringing them to these. And it wasn't until they had myself and Gamma, and then they loved the fact that Gamma was slapping me, and it got over. It got over as comical. And so what started out, but then Gamma slapping me was such a focal point, and the creative liked it. It went more into the comedic stuff, and I totally agree. I have I've pitched to them before because originally I was supposed to be the front man on the mic, but then they wanted Gamma to be the patriarch, and they wanted him doing all the talking. And I was I kind of molded myself into the black sheep of the the squad, always kind of going against the rules, going against the grain and getting in trouble for it, being that the bad kid. Um, but I had pitched to them and I had said this last night, we were doing an AMA on Reddit. What I wanted to do with it was a more serious 
uh, like, like you were saying, like not militant, but very, very serious, uh, a real world style. Because I would always, when we go out there and wrestle, people always want to chant, oh, quickie mart. You know what I mean? Stupid, stupid shit like that. And so I wanted to cut the promo like, you know, you chant quickie mart when we're out there. But whose fat ass is going out there, going into the quickie mart and buying his 20th Slurpee and paying the guy at the counter? Which one of you is living the American dream? Who took yoga from us? When you and your preppy girlfriend want to be cultured, where do you go eat? You go eat at the Indian restaurant. Who taught you how to have better sex with the Kama Sutra? We did, the Indians. So you want to take all the best things of our culture, but you want to boo the people that are bringing you that culture just because we're not like you. That's what I wanted to do. But they said it wasn't as entertaining as us being comical and silly. So we we kind of stayed that route. I know when Shira came, he wanted – Shira is a very, 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 very proud Indian man. And so – he wanted us to be more militant. He wanted us to be trying to mold us more into that uh, faction. But it never – stuff happened. You know, he had to go back to India. He had some stuff to take care of. Raj got injured. And so it was just me. And then, of course, you know, before that, Gersinder, he he uh, left. And so it was never – as soon as we would build momentum, something would happen. And then we have to start all over again. We would build momentum and then something would happen. So as of right now, there is no Daisy Hit Squad. As I cut in this promo, you'll see in a few weeks, it's just the Daisy Hit Man. And they are actually allowing me to be more serious, be more aggressive, be more hot-headed, be kind of almost what I am on the indies. So I, I look forward to people seeing that. But I agree with you, man. I believe we should have been that from day one. But the stuff with Gamma slapping me kind of took off and everybody liked it and they just kept going with it. And, and I'm not. I'm, my bad, Drake. I, I know. I, I always do this to you. I always cut you off, and I and I apologize. No worries, but, uh, man. And I think that's the part. Yeah, no. It's just that's the part that gets me. Because if you listen to what this man just said, now we've been in the apex where we've seen him come out. Can you imagine? Can you imagine how we? Would have felt and I'm. Mean, what would you have felt if he cut that promo in the apex zone? All of a sudden. I already know how I'm going to take. I'm like, whoa, this dude's legit. You know what I mean? Like, not just some random guy who just debuted. Can you imagine he cuts that promo and you watch him just like that? All of a sudden, he's not just some, you know, first off, he wasn't even uh, high review. They introduced him as, as Hakeem Zayn from, I think, uh, Detroit, Michigan. Yeah. And like the next night, he was, you know, he was something else. And we were like, huh? But that alone, if he cuts the promo the way he does he quickly wins people over because all of a sudden you got the people who are going to get super emotional like oh i fucking hate this guy and i'm gonna sit back like i love i guess drake i don't know what i mean you're cut you're cutting out on my end i don't know if you're cutting out on his but your your mic keeps cutting out on my end i can hear you in and uh, out he's going in a little bit brother okay yeah I, I got what you said i told you i heard what you said What's Dre, better than ahead, as that tells the truth? You know what I mean? It's like like watching Endgame with Thanos. Thanos is like, ah, you know, he's kind of right. You know, shit's overpopulated and things need to be taken care of. But he just went about it at the wrong way. But he was still kind of like, you know, when you start to see the truth and what that villain says, to me, that's the best villain. And that's what I would like to be because people are – racism isn't going anywhere. Prejudice isn't going anywhere. Stereotypes aren't going anywhere. So let me address it. But play it like an asshole to where I'm still the villain. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah, this guy's right, but he's such a dick about it. Like, I don't like him. And that's what I would want to do. So hopefully with the stuff that I'm doing now that's going to be coming up, maybe I'll be able to chance to throw that in there. Go ahead, Drake. I'm definitely, brother. Looking forward, definitely looking forward if you can squeeze that, uh, that hot take in there because that would spark some real vitriol. But uh, my question, my next question would be, uh, yeah, I mean, you've got a very expansive move set. You got a lot of, you know, you got some aerial abilities. You got definitely a ground and pound, and your submiss- your submission move set is great. Uh, of all of that, what would you say is probably your favorite move to perform? The leg sweep. Duck the, duck the head kick, hit him with the leg sweep, and then turn that into like a double stomp or something. Uh, that that I got from old kung fu movies. I can't like right now. All the lucha stuff is super popular. 
I can't do that stuff anymore. You know what I mean? My body is like just beat the fuck up and and I, I could probably do some of those things, but I'm not as athletic as like Alex Zane or the Rascals or Will Ospreay. So I'm not going to be doing the back handspring this or that or the springboard this or that anymore. I'll do a couple of things. But my favorite stuff is strikes, countering stuff. Um, I used to take Wing Chun Kung Fu for 10 years. I took Jiu Jitsu and I used to do some MMA. So, you know, I haven't done that stuff in forever, but I try to incorporate just that. You know, duck the hook, hit him with the body shot, come back up with the hook, catch him with the knee. They, I, I G up the head kick. They duck the head kick. Then I catch him with the sweep, end it off with the double stomp. Usually with the speed and precision, it gets a really good reaction and it looks pretty sweet. So that's probably my favorite thing to do right there. I want to say the first match I watched of your uh, indie career was you versus, versus uh, Shane Strickland at oh. a Glory Pro. Yeah. And when you you performed, I think I think you performed that combo exactly how you said it in there. And I remember watching that and going, "Whoa!" I appreciate that. That was I liked that match a lot. I hated my my performance though, just because I felt like I was really nervous in there, and I could have done a lot better by him. But a lot of people really liked that match, so I can only imagine how it would have been if I was 100% mental. But you know, it is what it is. All right, so hopefully I sound a little better. I got a, a thunderstorm over me, so you know, hopefully I'm coming through. But um, if you had one female to pick to be your manager, valet, however anybody wants to consider or call it, who would that female be and why? Sensational Sherry. She's the best. She could, she did everything. She could work. She cut the promo. She knew her character. She got heat like no other. I thought she was, man... She's like my favorite. Scary Sherry, Sensational Sherry. She was great. I thought she was great as a wrestler. Uh, I hated her as a kid. She was such a good heel. And she was such just like, man, piece of shit. And then she was, when she was with Savage and she would always get in the way. And especially the stuff with her, like uh, Warrior. Because uh, I was such a huge Warrior fan back then. And I hated Macho Man. I was like, gosh, Sherry's going to ruin it. And Sherry's going to make him retire. And man, I, I, I Sherry all the way, man. She was great. She was the best. Do you mind if I ask you your age? Because I know how old I am, and I grew up on that, so I thought you were way younger than me. Nah, I'm um, old, I'm brother. We'll leave it at that. I'm, oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm not, we're the same age. Okay. Because I was like, I was like, <laughs> damn, dude, why do you sound exactly like me right now? So mm-hmm. I was like, I got to ask him. Kayfabe that. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, you look great, brother. You look great. I appreciate it. I didn't start until I was 28. Like I said, I couldn't. I kept trying to make it work, and I couldn't make it work. And then I finally had a chance, and uh, I said, "Well, I always, I was always worried I was too old." And um, age-wise, you know, I guess that's old to most people. But I don't look that way, and I don't wrestle that way. I don't move that way. I'm in better shape than a lot of people are. Uh, you know, it's just my joints hurt, but that's all from just bas- years of basketball, trying to lift heavy, and everything I've done. That's just wear and tear over time. Everybody has it. So, yeah, I, I, I am. Yeah, I always get jokes from everybody about my age. I just I don't tell anybody my age to be honest because I don't feel like dealing with it. But <laughs> but it's not hard to find. It's not hard to find out. So. Oh yeah, yeah. Now I know this is my fault again. But I'm, listen, I played basketball, and uh, so would you run the point? You know, I would rather be a shooting guard. Point guard, I was fine with. Um, if it was street ball, definitely point guard. But I would rather be setting the picks, get, trying to get open and stuff like that. And I was really good in the scramble. That's when I was good when, you know, trying to get the ball. I was more of a Dennis Rodman, really good at the defense. But if you if I could get on fire, uh, then I was good. But I used to love basketball, man. I don't really watch sports like I used to. I used to watch them. Well, obviously not now. But I used to watch when I was younger religiously. And then I just – I don't know. I just kind of – do my own thing, man. I don't really, I don't, I don't try to watch a lot of TV. The only time I play games and watch TV is at night. I get everything done that I need to do during the day and I try to enjoy the day. And uh, at nighttime is when you'll, you'll catch me watching something or um, playing a game. Uh, everything else is just, I, I want to be doing shit. I got to be doing stuff. I hate sitting around. Drake, my fault, my fault, and uh, you'll get to your question after this. I just got to know who was your favorite team and your favorite player growing up. 
Chicago Bulls, Michael ah, Jordan. Here we go. But here I we did go. love I did love the Pistons <laughs> because they were the bad boys and they were sweet. But MJ was God status back then, boy. I'm I'm sorry. MJ was my dude. I loved Michael Jordan back then. I still love Michael oh, Jordan. Oh, great, I know. Wait, you are you you're a New York dude, right? Yeah. <laughs> oh, I know you hated Michael Jordan, boy. Those Knicks. Dude, I those mean, Knicks were dirty. He was, stuck, he was stuck in my team for, for, for way too long. Like, I mean, <laughs> it's crazy. Like, uh, there's a story, and uh, John Starks was talking about it recently, and he was saying that uh, one day he was just, just shutting down uh, Mike, and he was like, I'm shutting him down. I had like 20 something. Mike only had like 12. He goes, start of the fourth, the, the fourth quarter happened. He looks at me, he pats me on the shoulder. He's like, You done good, kid. Now the game's over. He goes, he scored 27 points after that. I couldn't hit a shot. And he just killed us. And I was like, oh snap. Like Jordan was just there's so basketball and then there's Jordan. Yeah. Yeah. He's yeah. like, to me, that's like uh, that's how I describe wrestlers. And I know a lot of people don't like John Cena. I think John Cena is one of the best of all time. Because John Cena is the last guy to transcend professional wrestling. Like Michael Jordan transcends basketball. LeBron does and Kobe, you know what I mean? But there is those guys that just transcend the sport that they're in. And they touch everybody. Like everybody knows who Michael Jordan is. Everybody knows who The Rock is. Everybody knows who Hulk Hogan is. Everybody knows who uh, Babe Ruth is. You know what I mean? They just, there's certain people that transcend their sport. And I feel like professional wrestling doesn't have that anymore. CM Punk, I thought was really close. Brock Lesnar, I think maybe those guys. But to me, like, yeah, that's how Jordan was, man. Jordan just transcended it. Like you said, there was basketball and then there was Michael Jordan. He's just on a different level. And that's that's what I was telling Drake. Now, now Drake Adams, he he's a he's a independent wrestler. He actually wrestles and stuff like that. You know, he's a young guy going through what he's doing. But I was telling him because he's not a big Cena guy, and he's here. He could try to defend it or hate on it. But I was saying that Cena right now could pull off what Hulk Hogan did with that NWL. I think he could. I, I understand why people don't like Cena. I get it. <clears throat> the reason I like Cena is because I'll never forget it was a Raw I was watching. And I know people say, well, his ring work and this and that. Um, the thing with Cena is that no matter if you like him, the majority of people, if you'd like him or don't like him, you don't turn off his match. You still watch his promo. You're invested in him. And I've seen him come out there and get booed by 100% of their crowd, cut a badass promo, and then next thing you know, he's getting booed by maybe 60% of the crowd, and he's turned 40 of them. You know what I mean? 40% of that crowd. Surfs from his great promo. That is something. That is something to get these people that hate you, and then you cut this badass promo, and next thing you know, they're cheering you because what you said, they felt. Like... That's like, ah, he just has that, that it factor, man. And, and it's like, and even there was a point in time when I was not like I either early training or whatever. I was like, oh, Cena's not good. He's, you know, his stuff is this and that. And all. But then as you get older and for me, wrestling will always be like, I love a lot of guys nowadays, but a lot of these guys nowadays, are you going to be talking about them 30 years from now? 30 years from now, you're still going to be talking about Hogan. You're still going to be talking about Flair. You're still going to be talking about Savage. You're still going to be talking about Cena. You're still going to be talking about Austin. These guys that transcend wrestling. You know what I mean? There's there's just, like you said, there's professional wrestling, and then there's these guys. And I feel like Cena was the last of that. You don't see that anymore. Why? I do not know. I do feel like the promo is part of it. There's, there's guys out there that don't have that complete package. And um, that's just my opinion. But that's what I feel. Like, I think there's a lot of great wrestlers out there that put on phenomenal matches and that I am huge fans of. But when it comes time to put a microphone in their hand, they can't get – they can get this audience that's in this small circle, but then they can't get that big audience that's in that huge circle that catches the eye of everybody. Hulk Hogan did the same stuff, but it didn't matter. Look at Rocket Austin. All their matches. Punch, kick, duck one, thirds. Hit the backdrop, go to the outside brawl, catch the boot, spin it around, hit the thumb, or hit the, the middle finger, go for the rock bottom, catch the elbow, bam, kick, stunner. Like their matches weren't 
the greatest, but you were so invested because of the story they told and the way they built it up, the promos they cut before that. That, to me, is professional wrestling. Um, not just professional wrestling, because I'll go watch a Kenny Omega match any day of the week. Um, but to me, those guys are, to me, that's the perfect package. That's just my opinion. Drake, now you can get your question in there, but don't ever in the chat ever again tell me nothing about John Cena, okay? <laughs> hey, no, I was literally <laughs> just about to commend him. I was just about to say, you're, my man, you are 100% right on that, and I will admit that I'm not a Cena fan, but I will watch his matches and I will sit through his promos. The, he does have the ability to hook the audience, and uh, I will say that I would say a good portion of my uh, – Dislike of Cena is probably jealousy. I can see that too. I mean, <laughs> I mean, I get the man looks like a million bucks. I'm I wasn't a big fan of the the fire or the funhouse thing, but man, Cena looked like a million dollars, man. Like he just oh, looked great. He looks old. His face looks older, but his body was like Jesus, man. He looked like a god. He's just stupid. No, we did a whole review on Mania, and yeah, we went in on that one. But uh, just to make it short, that was a promo, not a match. Yeah, and I, I feel the same <laughs> way. And I, I don't, you know, if people like it, they like it. It just wasn't my cup of tea. Same thing with the, the Boneyard. It, it was, it was yeah. they were all entertaining. It was all entertaining. But I would, I hope when this is all said and done, we get Undertaker and AJ in a ring because I think they would tear it up. I think Undertaker, when he wrestles guys that are workhorses, Instead of guys that are like him, I'm not saying he's not a workhorse, but like him versus Bray Wyatt, I don't think is a great mix. But him versus Shawn Michaels, him versus Ric Flair, him versus AJ Styles, that type of stuff to me is that's money right there because they can tell a certain story. And, and uh, yeah, I don't know. It's just to me, that's where the money is with him working with guys like that. And, Chef, don't you come into the chat with nothing about Taker after that. <laughs> All right. <laughs> uh, so since you competed in He's a singles right and tag now. competition. He's killing us. <laughs> I, can oh, never, I can never insult you guys for not liking who you like. I mean, we all have our opinions. <laughs> I just have my opinion with, uh, you know, who I like and – why I like them, that's all. I, I can't say, oh, you're wrong for not liking this guy because it's just an opinion. 100%, my man. All right, so since you've competed in a singles and tag competition throughout your career, uh, which would you say is more entertaining to work in? I like singles because it's just me, and it's my vision, and it's what I want to do, and that's what I came in to do. I don't mind working tag. I like working tag. I've had a lot of great tag partners over the year, and – over the years, and it's it's been fun. It's always fun to do something different, and I love tag team wrestling. But being a single star is, you know, kind of what I want to do and why I got into it. So uh, it was singles for me is where it, would, where it would be at. And the intention's all on me, so there you go. <laughs> this is true. All right. So... My question, it, it comes away from wrestling because I'm a big music guy. You know, obviously I'm into hip-hop and all that other stuff. What's in your playlist? My playlist consists of anything from Wu-Tang Clan, Frank Sinatra, Bob Marley, John Denver, Conan the Barbarian soundtrack to all types of nonsense. Slayer, Pantera, Metallica, Black Sabbath, Dio, you name it, man. Sam Cooke, Otis Redding. I go in. I love my music. Biggie, Immortal Technique, Jedi Mind, so Logic. You got, you got a crazy eclectic palette then. Dude, it depends on how I feel. Every morning right now, all I do is wake up, put on this coffee lo-fi station, jam out to that, drink my coffee, and chill. And that's what I do every single morning. And then I just discovered this artist called Justice Durr. And he plays these really sweet hip hop guitar um, version covers of songs. Man, I just, I just, you know, YouTube. You get once you go down that rabbit hole, you find all types of shit. But uh, yeah, I so I listen to him. It's super mellow. You know what I mean? It's just, it's just really cool. Depends on what I'm feeling. If I'm lifting weights, I love to listen to some heavy shit. I like to listen to like As I Lay Dying, Slayer, obviously. Um, 
uh, Kill Switch, but then I got to have some really good hip hop in there. I'll have Kendrick in there. I'll have some Woo in there, obviously. Uh, a couple of Nas's tracks that really hit really hard and just shit like that. That gets me going. MOP, you know, just it just depends. Mob Deep, freaking Shook Ones is always on my list. It's got a. a- and that's my home, so I'm really excited that you just said Mob Deep and Nas. So, dude, uh, East Coast, East Coast hip hop. Now you're one of shit. the greatest of all time. <laughs> Let's get it. Yeah, East, Drake, East, you better East Coast have a dope question. <laughs> I don't know if I can top that. Now you struck a chord with Chef over here. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Um. So everybody's going to ask you, the other question everybody's going to ask you in podcasts is, what's your favorite match? Do you have a favorite competitor? I'm leaving that behind. Uh, what's your least favorite match type? You know, you got ladder matches, hardcore, whatever. Which one do you hate doing the most that you've done? That I hate doing? Oh. Uh, yeah. I used to, when I first started, I was all about doing hardcore stuff. Um, well, not really all about it, but I would do it. I wouldn't care. I don't like to do it as much anymore, but um, I just I just don't like to do it. I think it's cool to watch. I used to love watching the FMW death matches all the damn time, and these guys nowadays are out there freaking killing it and just pushing the limits. It's insane. I did have a no holds barred match with Paco and AAW, honestly, but that and recently, and that was honestly one of my favorite matches that I've had. Just the the story that was told, the crowd energy, and the back and forth between Paco and I. It was. I loved it. I absolutely loved it. I wish I could watch it. I'm sure I'd tear it apart and dislike half the shit I did because that's how I am. But uh, I absolutely, absolutely love it. And if, as far as favorite matches go, too, I don't know any off the top. Like I don't. I can't just pick one. I loved Rock and Hogan. I love everything between Austin and Rock, uh, Dusty and Flair. I absolutely love. One of my favorite matches of all time will always be Rey Mysterio and Eddie Guerrero on Halloween Havoc. To me, that is. <sighs> The story was there. The athleticism was there. Everything. That was one of my favorite matches of all time. Macho Man is my favorite wrestler of all time. In-ring ability, I think it's Chris Benoit. I think he's just one of the best. Promo-wise, I couldn't even tell you. There's so many great promo guys out there. But Macho Man, to me, is a perfect package. He has the intensity. He has a look. He can tell a story in the ring. His promos are second to none So as as far as that goes. But I, I don't really have a least favorite. I, I mean, wrestling is wrestling. You go out there, you're going to have the... I guess the hardcore match or you're going to have the ladder match or whatever. I mean, I prefer just the basic match. That's my favorite type of match because that's the one you get to be, you have to be the most creative in because you don't have any toys to play with. It's just how are you going to make this match stand out? To me, that's my favorite stuff to do because it makes you work harder, in my opinion. See, I'm glad you brought Benoit because a lot of people hate on me for saying that Benoit is a huge inspiration of mine. And, you know, I don't commend the man for his actions outside of the ring, but in exactly. the ring, he's unmatched. Yeah, I, and I, I don't, like, I'm not going to sit here and try to tout him to be in the Hall of Fame and all this other stuff. I watched that dark side of the ring, and it was so heavy and depressing. But I, I'm not going to lie, like, he was the reason why, I, I, like I said, I used to record his matches all the time. I try to emulate him in the ring, his aggression the way he moved everything, I just think he was his. You can't take away his in ring ability. I'm not. I would never ever condemn what he did. What he did was terrible, and it's it's a horrible tragedy. But is I'm not talking about that. I, I don't. You know, I don't want to address that. I want to talk about his in ring ability. He existed. He wrestled, and his wrestling was fantastic, and it inspired me as a wrestler. So I would never, you know, deny that. And um, I'm not saying, you know, I'm not condemning him or celebrating him. But I, I, his ability in the ring, I'm not going to deny that. It did inspire me, and I still watch his matches to this day. Uh, he was a beast. Uh, Chris Benoit, WCW, WWF, or E, whatever they wanted to label it. He was a beast. I mean, no question. Um, now, this is the thing that, I, for some reason, I've I just never asked any wrestler and I don't know why, but if you could give these young cats any advice, how to like grow in this industry or how to build their platform to try to take that next step, uh, what would that what what advice would you give anybody to to be able to take just that next step ahead? To be honest, I think it's hard for guys like me because I think 
the younger guys kind of almost have it down pat because they're in the age where social media is key. And I don't like to get on social media a lot. The only reason I have a Twitter and Instagram is for wrestling. But I always use Danhausen as a perfect example. He reinvented himself and he did it, you know, partly with social media. And he's doing it right. And I think a lot of these other guys, look at Ethan Page. Ethan Page is one of the smartest business people in businessmen in this wrestle in the in the industry. He's taken himself and he's created his his brand, you know, his vlog, everything he does. The man gets toys sent to him by Hasbro. It's like, what the hell? I'm so jealous of that. That's so cool because of how he built himself up and how he played the game. To me, these guys already know how to do it. And the using the using gifs or gifs, however you want to say it, using that, using um, clips, because nowadays it's not about the matches and the promos that get you over. What well, kind of the promos if you have something really cool that you're doing, like Dan the Dad, uh, War Horse, or Dan Housen. Um, but it's also about, oh, this guy just did a top rope Canadian destroyer, and then it gets passed around on Twitter, and next thing you know, this guy has 6,000 followers. And some guys are really good in the ring, and some aren't. That's just how it is. But I bet you they have more followers than I do because I, I maybe I'm too old school and I'm not this generation. I will say this. I see some people that will disrespect a lot of the guys that have been here before and they try to pass down their advice and they're like, oh, what do you know? You're this back in the day. This was blah, 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 blah. Don't disrespect what brought you, what paved the way for you. You know, these guys were out there bleeding buckets when you were sitting there jerking off to freaking sunny posters. Like, don't don't disrespect those guys. No matter whether you agree with them or not, they're still – your elders, they're still vets, whether they wrestled in at WrestleMania or they were jobbers on WWE TV, it doesn't matter. They were still putting in work and we're still nobodies, you know, and we're trying to be somebody. Listen to what they say. Humor them. Don't disrespect them. I, I hate that. Um, and be respectful. I think wrestling is not as hard as it used to be. And as far as people giving people a hard time. I do think there are a lot of soft ass people in this industry right now, but I think it's just the way society is. People get offended by everything. People want to have this false outrage and then people jump on the bandwagon and try to ruin other people's careers. It's like, stop doing that. Think for yourself. We all said stupid shit before. We've all done stupid shit. We all continue to do stupid shit. Stop trying to harass other people. Now, some people deserve it. Some people go way too far. Some people deserve that stuff, and they and they and they do stuff that's like, yeah, you shouldn't have done that. Like that's bad. And no, I'm not gonna. It's gonna be a while before you get that forgiveness. But some people will say dumb stuff and out of heat of the moment, you know. And definitely, they should get a comeuppance for it. But not. I don't think their their career should be ruined, or their career shouldn't be ruined until you know all the facts about the situation. I just think people are, are so eager and quick to be have that mob mentality and judge other people like their shit don't stink. I uh, going back to the boneyard and uh, the funhouse thing. People were if you didn't like it, you were stupid, and if you didn't like it, you need to hang them up because th- this is the way professional wrestling is going. What? If people didn't like it, they didn't like it. It's like shut the fuck up. Who cares? If they didn't like it, stop being so entitled. I, I can't stand people like that. It's like people don't like stuff you do. Or, you know, everybody has an opinion. It's like, shut the hell up, man. Like, we're no, we're no better than anybody else. People, honestly, I can't stand them nowadays. People are so, it's just so stupid. And so, like, and self-entitled and self-obsessed. It's like, shut up. Ah, some people are so dumb. Especially, I just, I just, it just bugs the shit out of me. To my advice, I guess you could say, don't be that way. Be humble. Be smart. Be open to ideas. You know, but still have that drive and passion to better yourself and and pay attention to what other people are doing and try to recreate that, but in your way. Don't be a don't be an idiot. Don't be a dummy. Don't be like the rest of these people. Don't fall into that crowd. Don't be a get along gang person. Don't be in a clique that is filled with a bunch of morons. Just be you, man, and be a leader. Don't be a follower. Some people are just so stupid. It gets on my nerves. As you can tell, I get hot about it. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? There's like what what I call sheeples because you know people and sheep because uh, they coexist with each other and um, as soon as you say something like and like I said we're we're 
damn near the same age. We didn't grow up where if I didn't like something, no one used the word that I was a hater. Like that wasn't even a thing. Like no one even cared. Like, all right. Yeah, you, oh, you just don't like it. Okay, like nobody really cared unless you were being like real over the top with it. Then people would be like, "Why are you acting like an asshole?" You know what I mean? Like exactly. Now, now everything is. Oh, I really didn't like that. Oh, that's because you're a hater. And it's like, whoa, like just because I I I don't like something, I'm instantly a hater. Like, no, we're just you know we're human beings. We're not supposed to like everything. That's why it makes us human. Exactly. Yeah, people take it too far, man. They take it too far, and they it's such a short fuse. That people, this whole cancel culture stuff, all that. Oh, God, man. It's ridiculous. Just, people just need to chill out. Chill out. I can't stand that stuff. Drake, let me apologize, brother, because I got him wild up. I don't even know what your next question is, but I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. Let's get fired up. The more action we can get, the better for the show, right? <laughs> Back. <laughs> Uh, no, my next question is, what is next for Rohit Raju or Hakeem Zayn? Either one you'd like to answer or both. What's next for you? Who knows? What's next in life, right? I mean, <laughs> uh, myself and Karam, Hustle in the Muscle, we were really trying to venture out and try to, try to do some stuff. But who knows what's next? I know at Impact, I have some stuff cooking. It's a small shift in direction with my character that I can't wait for people to see. And I hope the office sees it and sees that I'm capitalizing on it. And I hope it gets people's attention to where it leads to bigger and better things for me. Cause man, I'll be damned if I'm not busting my ass and trying. So we'll see what happens with that. Other than that, man, everything's up in the air. You can still catch me every Tuesday right now, access, you know, TV and Twitch on impact wrestling, 8 PM. Uh, and then I'll be on social media all the time trying to, all I do now is just post pictures of me after workouts looking swole. That's it. Like a douchebag. So, you know, that are my dogs, but other than that, <laughs> just trying to stay relevant. Um, but other than that, man, who knows? We'll find out what's next when the veil is lifted and we can start getting things back on track, but who knows how long until that's going to be. So, but until then I'm going to no be doing inside scoop right. or anything we can get. <laughs> oh, me? No, I, we're on lockdown here in Michigan. So the only thing I can tell you is that uh, Rohit Raju is going to become more of a hothead on Impact Wrestling. And I, and I want people to tune in. And the biggest thing I can say is that they finally let me cut promos. You know, they finally let me you cut promos what? by myself. So I hope that leads somewhere. I'm going to give you an inside Drake Adams of what's going to happen. So because... I'm on the last pod I did where we talked about Rebellion and I was hyping up Rohit and his match and everything else because I'm pro Rohit. I don't know what it is. I just am. I'm a, I'm a fan of this guy's work. So what I said there is that uh, that you're going to be an Impact Wrestling Hall of Fame, which I know is a, it's, it's a high ceiling, but I don't care. It's what I say. It's how I do things here. I say whatever I want. And um, I did call that uh, by 2021, 22, that you're going to be an X Division champion. So uh, when you do, there's going to be a podcast that I put out. I'm not going to do it with Drake Adams or Crooked Smile, my other guy, because it's just going to be me talking shit, have a picture of you with the X Division. I'm going to do this. I'm going to talk a lot. It'll be like six minutes of me just bragging about how I'm like the Nostradamus, <laughs> you know, the Nostradamus of the podcast game. But um, no, honestly, I, I can't wait. Like I said, I, I, I know you work at AEW, so I think if they'll allow you to transition half of that, Fans will get behind you so fast because it's it's such a a night and day thing. Like it's it's so dope, and I think it'll be absolutely amazing. Um, Drake, what else do you have for the band? I think that's pretty much it on my part. I got everything out that I was looking for. You just sounded selfish, like I what I wanted. That sounded mad selfish, like. <laughs> That was crazy, hey, that's right? That's heels are, no? Heels are selfish. I'm in it for me. That's right. He got what he needed. Listen, I'm going to respect I'm gonna that. The, the two guys that I have here, obviously one, we don't know what happened to him. He might go missing. He uh, made fun of this guy's wife uh, two weeks ago, and uh, he went missing for a little while. And, uh, you know, we made like a missing poster. People laughed at it and stuff like that. But um, 
the cool part about working with these guys is that they're actually wrestlers and they have really good insight. So when he says stuff like this and you agree, it makes me, you know, make me laugh because I'm just a former athlete. You know, I just talk shit and have fun. But um, I mean, to be honest with you, like I said, I think that once Impact Wrestling fans and it is a good fan base, you know what I mean? I, I wish you guys didn't leave because, you know, we loved you guys at the Impact Zone. Like I said, both of us and the other guy, we were there for when you first came out and, and all the other times after that until they left. But um, no, man, we listen, we really appreciate your time and everything. And if you could just plug your social medias and and if you want to throw your dog's name in, let's get them over as well. Uh, plug that and, and we'll send we'll do our goodbyes. You can catch me on Twitter at Hakeem Zane. That's H-A-K-I-M-Z-A-N-E. Of course, on uh, the old Insta, Raju Zane 80. If you look me up on YouTube, just look up Rohit Raju or the Mad Dragon Hakeem Zane. You'll find promos and matches of stuff. Any any footage that I get that I will put on there. And then, of course, on Facebook, you just look up the same. You can find my page there. Nine times out of ten, I'm posting any of my stuff on um Instagram or Twitter, because that seems to be the hotbed right now. And my dogs, my babies. Let's see. We got Miss Daisy May, and we have Oliver, and then we have my newest edition, Koba. Are they what kind of dogs do you have? So Daisy May is a Chihuahua mix. I believe she is Chihuahua, Jack Russell, and uh Dachson. Oliver is a Brussel Griffin. They look like really fat pugs. And then oh yeah, actually he looks like a really fat pug. And then Koba, those are two little dogs. Koba is a boxer pit mix. Wow. All right, because I have three myself. I have an Applehead Chihuahua, uh-huh. a Terrier, and a Pit Bull. So nice. I, I kind of get you. I got you on the little and the big. It's a weird mix, but it's absolutely amazing. Um, and the, the smallest dog I have is the worst dog. So there you go. <laughs> <laughs> He's the gangster. Yeah, she's a uh, – oh, shit. She don't mess around. All right. Listen, on that, once again, brother, we thank you so much for your time. Um, Super honored. We can't wait to see what's next. For Drake Adams, myself, Joker's Club Podcast, we out of here.